We have a panel with The Gentleman coming up. Inspired by his 2019 film, Guy Ritchie is back, and this time it's on television with this Netflix drama. When Eddie Horneman, played by Theo James, inherits... <laughs> when he inherits the English aristocrat's father's large estate and becomes the new Duke of Halstead, he finds out his country pile has become a little bit of a part of a major weed operation. Uh, Caius Goldario plays Susie Glass, who runs her father's crime operation while he's in prison. And Daniel Ings plays Eddie's drug-addicted brother, Freddie, who gets into a spot of bother, uh, and if you've seen it, particularly when he's dressed as a chicken. Um, so look, let's hope this one doesn't go all Pete Tong, and please welcome Theo, Kea, and Daniel to the stage. Before we get into it, uh, let's take a gander at a clip. In terms of the rest of my estate, including my title, the house and grounds, the extensive wine cellar, the art collection, the yoghurt farm and dairy, the village of Hetheringham, as well as the property in the south of France, I hereby leave to my son. All right. Um, Edward Bonnell. So I think... Um, I was kind of thinking of everybody, if, if, if um... Sorry, again for me, old chap. I leave to my son, Edward Horneman. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry this has happened to you. I think there must be some sort of, it's, he's Edward, I'm Freddy. And it's just, sometimes they call me Fredwood, and so it gets a little bit blah, 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 mixed up. I think there's some sort of mistake, unfortunately. I don't think so. I get it. You're kidding. You're kidding around. This is... Was this... This is... Did you... Did you arrange... This is a joke, right? This is, this is a sick joke. It, I'm the eldest fucking son. It was all supposed to go to me. What... What... What, what the fuck is this? Freddy. No, 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 no don't, don't Freddy. touch me. Don't Freddy, touch Freddy, me. Freddy, relax. Don't you start Sorry, either. Sorry, some sort of mistake. Assuming my father was receiving about 10% a year, which would seem fair, this place must be turning over 50 million a year. You're in the right ballpark. And being that you said you have a substantial share of the market, one would assume substantial means half or more. That means this is a very small cog in a much larger machine. You must have dozens of places like this all over the country. You know your father never concerned himself with the workings of the wider operation. Well, I'm very curious. All you need to know is that we have an agreement that means, as the new landlord, you will receive a significant amount of money every year in return for letting us carry out our activities. Well, the trouble is, I might have to put the house on the market. We prefer to keep things as they are. Well, I'm sorry if that puts you in an awkward position, Miss Class, but it's my house and my hand might be forced. I completely understand your grace. I, I love that those two clips sort of sum up Guy Ritchie's world perfectly, one where there's a lot of swearing and one where there's just a sort of allure of danger in, in that. Um, Theo, let's start with you. As I said, very Guy Ritchie. He mixes these two worlds of, you know, sort of high society and then, you know, illegal drug dealing in boxing rings. Uh, were you a Guy Ritchie fan before? What was it about this that wanted you to, to enter Guy Land? Well, the first clip, we didn't get to the part where Dan uh, simulates penises, which I was kind of <laughs> sad about, really. But um, I, Guy has been a seminal uh, a voice in Britain, and, you know, we grew up watching him. Lockstock came out in our teen years, um, and he kind of reinvented a subgenre. Uh, the idea of mixing uh, British high class with a, a kind of gangster underbelly was a really good conceit. And beyond that, it's a, it's a good but, and simple central narrative, the idea of someone coming back to their family seat reluctantly and they find out that uh, after their father dies, underneath is a kind of very dangerous criminal empire being run and he has to extradite the family from it. And then beyond that, it's a comedy, so it's supposed to be kind of high jinx and high hilarity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is supposed to be. Yeah, it's supposed to be. Uh, by the way, I still can't fucking believe that I did 
the like slow motion cocks and then there's the shot of like me sticking my tongue out. I can't believe I did it and I can't <laughs> believe it's in a TV series that exists <laughs> and I still I still like cringe every time I think about it. Kids are you see love it. One yeah. day. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, I just had to inject that. Uh, no, I like it. thinking. Um Kai <laughs> <laughs> was I thinking. You play Susie Glass. Yes. She is she's the boss basically. Uh, dad's in in prison, a very nice prison, but uh, you are running this empire um, and, and seemingly pretty well, right? She's, she's in charge, Susie is. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's kind of what I, I loved about her. Um, when we meet her, she is a woman at the top of her game already. There's no kind of coming of age or, or her fighting to get there. She's already completely in control. She's good at what she does and she's unapologetic about it. Um, I loved that for her. Um, and to kind of get to start in that place with a character is really interesting. To then build the vulnerabilities and the cracks later on, but to, to meet her and her already be, you know, she has the biggest dick out of all of them. And I loved that about her. <laughs> 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 they have lovely dicks too. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> oh God, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> I didn't realize we were going to send in this quite so early, otherwise we might have put this panel after lunch, but hey. <laughs> Um, one of the nice things about this is she's, you know, Guy Ritchie, without being mean to him, isn't it, you know, this is probably one of his stronger female characters, right? She's, she's not a wallflower. She's not someone, mobster's girlfriend. She's, she's very much, you know, she's got one over on, on Eddie, really. To a, yeah, and, a, and that was something I was quite um, aware of, that I think within Guy's universe, he hasn't really explored that as, as much as I think he should have. But he does with her, and, and uh, I kind of spoke to the showrunners when the part came up, and I wanted reassurance that she would continue to be in that position, and we didn't have all the episodes at first, and I did have this fear that she may turn out to just be the wife or the girlfriend or something like that, um, and I was really adamant that if, if I wanted to do this, if I wanted to bring this character into this universe, that um, she should keep momentum and she should be strong throughout and not necessarily strong all the time I think that's a sort of lazy trope as well to just have a woman be strong all the time I mean every woman I've ever met is complicated and beautiful and strong and weak and everything in between so I always that's what I want to play because it's real for me I, I, I've never met a woman who isn't all those things so I would never want to play that character it just doesn't make sense yeah no, that's fair uh, Daniel uh, Freddie is none of those things um, <laughs> seemingly um, what do you mean <laughs> Freddie is a coke snorting something that I shouldn't really say at this time of the morning. Um, say it. He does. <laughs> <laughs> They're all English. Come on. What? I, I don't remember the so line. What to say it? It's a part of Guy Ritchie's world. Come it on. is. If I didn't spot the children in the audience, ah, I might be more. No. I might be more inclined to, uh, to, to say uh, to drop the C bomb. Oh. But uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you don't get the country pile and. Not. He's not happy about that. He's not he? happy about it um, in a big way. And that was fun, that, that clip that you showed there. That was like one of our first big group scenes on set. And, you know, I sort of knew that it was a go big or go home situation with, with some of those moments. And I think like working with, with these guys and, and Vinny and Jolie, like working with people where you feel like you have the freedom to to go big and like Theo would just be egging me on like go bigger go bigger um that was that was part of the fun of it i think was was having the uh, the um the space and the trust from from everybody to just um ham it up and dial it up to 11 yeah you you say that's one of the big scenes the other the, the most memorable scene for freddy he's dressed as a chicken yes it's a sort of it's a there's a tinge of darkness, right, to that. It's funny, but yeah. it, there's an element of sadness to... Well, Theo describes it as a chicken snuff porn movie. Sorry, cover your ears. Um, <laughs> but it kind of, it, it, we've said this before, but on the page it was a much more sort of um, goofy hijinks scene. It was, do you know what I mean? It was just sort of uh, dumb and silly. And I think partly it's the chicken costume itself is a thing of rare beauty, you know, like a handcrafted uh, chicken suit. But that was, I think that was Guy uh, at his best, recognizing that for the stakes, for the thing to work, to care, it kind of has to be, you have to believe that this man has been shamed and just squished into a puddle of shit on the floor. And, uh, and so again, it was fun. It was quite an intense day, wasn't it, that one? Um, yeah, look, they're still scarred. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, it was fun. Uh, Theo, you've talked about Guy's very specific tone. I guess it's a comedy, but you want to make sure it doesn't sort of head into farce, right? Especially with a scene like that. Yeah, and that's what we were, you know, collectively always very aware of. Uh, if you go lean on uh, comedy, kind of the, the ridiculousness of it, you lose the stakes and it becomes, as you say, farce. In a funny way with Guy's tone, then if, you, if it becomes too dramatic, it can be melodramatic in a way. It's, it's a very fine line. It is comedy at the end of the day, but either way, you kind of push too much in one direction. It, it kind of loses the stakes of, of the world and the, the power of the scenes, really. So that was something we were always playing with. Also, Guy likes to have a skeleton of a script, so he has the idea of an entry and an exit point within a scene. And then most things up for most things are up for grabs within that. So there was, you know, quite a lot of um, improvisation, but also trying to mould some of it on the day. A lot of that. Um, so sometimes tearing our hair out, sometimes not. Um, but there's a, a definite freedom there that elicits some. Uh, you know, uh, you go to places that you weren't expecting, which uh, can be really satisfying. Yeah, there's a kind of panic that kicks in, isn't there? there, there I remember that there, there were days where we were there and he'd be like, um, right, Theo, you need to come up with something that's, uh, you know, you need, to, you need to reassure him, go and say something. And then you'd rattle through three things. He'd be like, no, nah, that shit, something else. <laughs> no, nah, that shit, something else. And we'd be sort of like there crafting in the moment and both come away going, what did we just shoot like what did we just do <laughs> um, but, but somehow that kind of panic uh, uh i don't know you literally come away going i don't know what my heard performance the phrase, was you can be richie yeah. yeah yes yeah. that was what we we talked about you get richie and it's uh you either give in to him in the existential love making or you uh <laughs> <laughs> you push back and uh, y you're not going to win essentially so so uh, it's a battle you're not going to win so you have to give in to the process yeah. Uh, undeniably, and kind isn't of isn't existential lovemaking the name of your album? <laughs> isn't, uh, yeah. Exactly, it is, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, it's your book of poetry. <laughs> yes, coming out sixth uh, yeah. of June, book of poetry. <laughs> uh, not really, um, but yeah. And then sometimes he would add little gems, which were quite uh, satisfying. There's a scene between Dan and I, and it really wasn't working. The two of us, uh, Dan, I'm trying to tell him he has to do something. He's rebuffing me. And just the, the chemistry wasn't working, the whole thing wasn't working. Guy came in, he was like, nah, I just need something, I just need something, doesn't he? What does he need? Fucking need something. Nah, 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 nah. Hit, hit him. I was like, what? He was like, <laughs> hit him, just hit him as hard as you can. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't tell Dad, and then the next day, I just smacked him. Uh, and it, it really and worked. By the How way, he really fucking hit me. <laughs> right, like backhand, not backhand, a forehand right across the ear. <laughs> and then the thing was, it really did work. And it made that moment, which otherwise would go for nothing, you know, we're like by the fireplace. It made it just interesting. We were both like, oh, okay, this is what it is. So then we had to keep doing it. Yeah. And he was like, he was like, do you want me to pull it? I was like, no, 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 now we've got to do it. We did about eight takes before they said, oh, you're hitting him on the wrong side of the face. It's the camera's <laughs> up. You've got to like. <laughs> Talking of hitting people, um, um, <laughs> Kaya, you, you have a few scenes with Ray Winston. What was that like? Ray, you know, he's your dad in this. Uh, he's playing a hard man in a very, very nice prison, or at least the wing that he is in. Yeah. What was, uh, what was working? Uh, with it was like? great. For a long time, we didn't know who was going to play my daddy. He was sort of one of the late castings. Um, and I'd heard his name floated around, and I was like, there's no way he's going to come do that. Like, that would be too amazing. Um, and he did, and he turned up, and, uh, you know, he's this big, hard man. He's got this barrel voice and this huge intensity, but he's such a teddy bear. He's, like, the loveliest human being. And, and we formed a bond very quickly, which is obviously very great and, and, and good for the process. And I felt safe enough to play with him and to kind of tug a war with him in the scenes mm. um, and going toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. You know, we have a scene towards the end of the season um, probably like my favorite day on the shoot and one of my favorite days of my career. Thanks a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember being in that scene. <laughs> <laughs> I was playing with the grown-ups that day. So <laughs> 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 um, towards the end, Susie and, and Eddie come to this, uh, they basically, well, talking over a Winston, Bobby kind of get, puts them in the situation where you all become equal partners. 
right? On, I think he uses the phrase diabolical journey. Um, have you kind of discussed if there was more, if there's a season two where that diabolical journey might take, uh, take your characters? It, it, it wasn't genuinely discussed. Uh, I think it would be a wrangling process with all of us and Guy, but also I think with a show like this, if you're going to do more, you need to come up with a really interesting conceit for season two, because as, 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 as much as we enjoyed it and as fun as it was, it, it needs narrative drive. So I think if, if there's an interesting idea, then maybe, but I think before that, then you know, there needs to be discussions, t as it were. Yeah, okay, well I hope... Uh, it's always, it's, you know, it's the story, it's the character, and then it's, it's what animal I would dress up as. <laughs> Can we be in the Caribbean as well? Yeah. What animal yeah, would yeah. you like and, to be? And the weather. Have you thought about it? What animal would you like to be dressed up as? Well, well you always liked. It was two legs last time, wasn't it? So some sort of quadruped. Um, <laughs> it's a, I mean, it's a cow. Okay. <laughs> Well, here's hoping Guy is, uh, is listening. So uh, thank you very much, Theo, Kaya, Daniel. Oh, <laughs>